guys and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect and today we're jumping back into some more Project Architects. So, I hope you guys are ready. So, welcome back. Today I have some big plans. Um, I want to go ahead and actually hide all of these pedestals, but the main goal of today is I want to quarry out that custom dimension we made and also find and uh, be able to spawn the rare ones in um, with Art of Tools. So that way we can actually make a pretty interesting dimension. I actually might try to make a dimension of glass um, and make it a normal world. We'll see what we can do, but I definitely want to start quarrying out the main thing and just watch our EMC just go insane. It, it's, that's going to be the fun thing. Um, now, there's several things that I, I want to do in this pack that are coming up, um, and I want to go ahead and explain that to you. Um, so we are going to be working on getting... Basically, the uh, the max amount of power that I think we can generate in this pack um, with one of the mods. So, uh, Industrial Foregoing has a way of generating 25 million RF per tick. So, I'm going to have a video here soon where we are going to set that up. It's going to be called the Mycelial Generator. Oh, I'm super excited for that. And then, after we have max power, that's when I really want to focus and I want to get set up. I want to get th these things enchanted. And we are going to fight the Chaos Dragon. We are going to fight the ultimate boss in this pack and upgrade all of our stuff after doing so to the Chaotic Tier. I've never actually done the Chaotic Tier, and I've never fought the Dragon. In 112, I've never fought it. I've never fought that Dragon. So it's, it's even harder, apparently, in this version than it was in the past. So keep that in mind. That's coming up. And I hope you guys are excited for that. So what are we doing today? Well, I got a little, uh, somebody had mentioned, why don't I hide these? Um, and so I was like, you know what? That would be awesome. Like to have a little button that I could like press whenever I want to activate these and when I want to use them. Um, otherwise, it'll just be a nice room in here. So how do I want to go about doing this? Well, it's not going to be the prettiest thing in the world. I'm going to have spots in the floor. Like you're going to know that this exists. But it is going to be a pretty fun project to set up nonetheless. So I'm going to be using modular routers. And this is going to be utilizing the extrusion uh, part of modular routers, which is really, really fun. Um, so let's just go ahead and get blank modular routers. We're going to need enough to um, complete this project. I'll grab a few of these. And we will need camouflage upgrades. So I'll go ahead and grab some of those for now as well. Um, the only other thing we could do is potentially speed upgrades, but... This right here is going to be awesome. I think the, uh, somebody had mentioned using pistons for these, but I was like, you know what? We have modular routers. Why don't we just place a modular router under each one of these and then wire up the redstone so that way uh, once this um, is completed, like once this activates, uh, whenever we push a button, it's going to be like a toggle latch. Um, and so we'll basically be reversing... Um, yeah, we'll be we'll just have a toggle latch set up. Um, if you don't know what a toggle latch is, um, it's basically a lever that is toggleable. <laughs> so pretty pretty awesome in this pack that it has all these nice little redstone functionalities. Um, and then we can actually uh, send all of these redstone with RF tools, and that'll also be a nice way for me to show off the crazy redstone functionality that RF tools has. So here we go. We have all this these broken. Now, I do have these extruders set with a, uh, a diamond pick. Um, so whenever you make your break module, you can choose what pickaxe you want it to have. And that is the the uh, the breakability and speed and stuff, the base speed that it's going to have. So I went ahead and used diamond to make these extruder modules. Um, so for each of the extruder modules, I'm actually going to go ahead and configure them because you can configure all of them in your hand. So I have, what is this, eight, nine? I was going to get nine of these ready to go. And so while I have them in my inventory, I can just hit in or shift right click while I have them or right click. And I'm going to configure these all to up because every single one of these routers are set to up at the moment. So with all of them set up, let's go ahead and do a little test here on the center, right? So we have this set up. And if we open this up by hitting in, you can see it's going up. If I put this inside the buffer slot, which is the slot that it reads for the items, um, we can give this a redstone pulse. And we're going to notice it's going to place the item. And then after the redstone signal goes away, it is going to 
go ahead and uh, put the item back inside and basically hide itself. Um, so that's what I want. I want it to be able to do that. I want the redstone uh, mode to basically be when it receives a signal to, to pop it up, whenever it uh, loses the signal, I want it to go back down. That's perfect. That's exactly what I want. Um, now I need to get all of the pedestals in each one of these, and then we get to work on the fun redstone mechanics. So this is where the fun really begins, right? Because we have this thing called red or RF tools in here um, that gives us redstone functionality. That is one of the big part of RF tools. And uh, we have a redstone receiver and a transmitter. The transmitter is gonna send the redstone signal wirelessly to the receivers. So all we have to do is place down a transmitter and then we right click on it with all of the receivers that we have and these will all be set to channel one or whatever channel the transmitter was set to. And so when we pick up the transmitter, these are still linked. I'm gonna show you um, by placing these down, um, let's turn into the bat, that's gonna make it a lot easier. Um, so as we're down here, um, keep in mind when you place down redstone machines like this redstone receiver, it does matter what place on the block you're looking at. So I'm gonna be looking at the spot that I want this going to. So I want it to go up. So I'm looking at the top side of the block. And that is gonna be one of the easiest ways to get our redstone signal to go the direction that we want it to go. And I'm gonna place these all on the same side, hopefully without missing any. I know I have nine of them. And so these are gonna be all nice and linked up. Look at that. Um, let's see, I'm missing one. It was this one right here. So yeah, get my last receiver and then we're, we're good. So the other thing that I have to do is I think right here, I wanna use this block. I wanna have a uh, basically a button here. Um, but the problem is, is I don't have a whole lot of room. Um, now this button, let's see, how am I gonna manage this? Actually, I, I guess I can't place it here. That's kind of the unfortunate thing. If th with this being such a small space, there's not a good place for me to put it. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna do some looking here and see what I can figure out. Believe it or not, this spot right here should actually work better than most. Um, so let's grab a few building blocks and we'll just place this back here. Perfect. So um, now that I have this set up, let's go ahead and fix this. This is gonna be really simple. So all we have to do is this block's gonna receive a redstone signal. It is going to affect the toggle latch, which once this receives a signal, it'll flip the lever, lever ugh, flip the lever to either on or off when it receives a pulse. And then that is going to send to the transmitter. Now the transmitter has a weird way of working. Um, if we want this to go out that way, we need to make sure that it is turned that way so it receives the redstone signal from the toggle latch. And that's basically it. We can demonstrate this by go ahead and, and giving it a redstone signal. And there we go, everything popped up and everything went down. Now, to make this look like it's more even, I know it looks weird how they all pop up at different times. Um, I think that's because these things end up going into like a, an eco sleep mode to prevent lag. Um, but we can actually put a speed upgrade or put max speed upgrades in these and that will help a little bit. But as you can see, they do all come up, which is perfect. And we can also make them silent too, so they don't make any noise if we really wanted to. Um, so yeah, this is all working. So all I gotta do is grab some stripped spruce logs, pop that in there, strip spruce. Oh, I have two different kinds. There's this, um, place the button on here, Put the strip there so you'd probably never see it. Nice and hidden. Hit the button and then they all pop up. So I thought, yeah, I thought that was a pretty good idea. Not the focus of today's video, but definitely something that I, I wanted to show off because I thought it would be kind of interesting. Um, and then all we have left to do is to cover this all up and then to sort of disguise, somewhat disguise the blocks um, that exist in the floor here. I know they don't look awful, but I mean, we can do something. So all we have to do is hit them with a camouflage upgrade. And just like that, they actually kind of fit in here a little bit better. Just like that. Perfect. Now I just wonder how quick this would be with a speed upgrade. So I put all nine speed upgrades in here and uh, 
Yeah, it, it's up, it basically instant now. <laughs> as soon as you push the button, they are ready to go. Actually looks really nice with this border and everything around them. Look at that, that is perfect. So let's get into the real fun of today, and that is jumping back in to the RF Tools dimensions. Um, and there is a lot of a lot of fun stuff that we still have left to do. We've barely really touched the surface. Um, let's get back into RF Tools. We still have quite a few of these that I can continue to throw in, so that way we can learn more information here. Um, by the way, apparently, there's this cheater upgrade. I have no idea what this is. Admin dimlets or dimlets that provide administrator functionality in a dimension. What? Oh, excuse me? What? Um, have I literally learned everything? That, I mean, we might have, I wonder if that's a legendary upgrade. Ors, what taught us administrative stuff that's insane but anyways um so we have all of this stuff in here that we can make um but right now we have this beautiful dimension that we can already go into so let's let's go back into this dimension and i say it's beautiful because it does make it pretty easy for us to find the rare slimes and stuff simply because it's got all this dark glass in here um and look, these are just they're all over the place like i can find these like they're nothing but the big thing is this. So I wanna get a system set up where RF Tools just mines out a single one of these cubes. Like right here is a perfect example of that single cube. Or actually this one right here, this looks bigger. Man, these are, these are all massive. So um, I should be able to just to quarry out a single cube and we'll be able to see, like this one's a perfect single cube. And I just wanna see how much EMC was basically in a single cube. Like right now we have 2.2 billion, but I don't know. This is going to be crazy with the, with a builder. Oh, this is going to be nuts. All right. So we need a card, a shape card and some power. And we are going to mine this bad boy out lever. And then what else would I need? Um, we have so much EMC that. I might be able, well, I can't send it that quickly. Um, there is an unlimited. How much is the unlimited? We might actually use all of our EMC to, to make this. Um, so from our project architect, how much is this? This is 2.7 billion EMC. This one lets you do 1,000 items per second. We have this one. I'm gonna continue to add these. I mean, these are gonna, cost more and more EMC as they go up. And this last one, I do not have enough EMC for, um, but I can, I can pull this one out. Okay, so we just lost a 1 billion EMC or so. Um, I'm gonna place this builder right on top and we, we see if we have 1.5 billion EMC. Okay, all right, Mr. Builder. Let's get you a couple of blocks above where this is at. Don't know if this is an even structure or not. Hard to tell. Somewhere right here. Place the builder. Hope you guys are just as excited as I am about this. Because I'm I'm excited to see how much. Because these are, like, a one stack is like 9 million EMC. So it's, it's a lot. That's, that is a lot. I just wonder, the builder's gonna be limited by this speed, uh, how quickly it can send items into this. So that's placed down, that's ready to go. Then we just gotta get our shape card. So I click on this, I set my first corner, then I set my second corner, and let's hope that it didn't break anything. I should just be able to quarry. I'm just gonna hit, I'm gonna place it in and hit the quarry button. I'm not going to do anything fancy because I don't want this to uh, change its coordinates. All right, so we just place the lever and let's go. Here it goes. Look at our EMC growth. <laughs> yeah, lots of EMC. So we had 1.5 billion. 
So after this is done mining, we're going to see where this goes. Um, yeah, I think it's being limited. I don't know if it's being limited by how many items are going here. I mean, 1,024 items per second is a lot. I think it's more than enough, yeah, to handle the, the speed of this. Oh, wow, look what's underneath here. All these rares, <laughs> okay. Um, so while I'm doing this, might as well grab these guys. Oh boy, there's actually a lot of them down here. Why are they all down here? Like, I just hung out here for a second. Look at all these rares. I also want to see, I, I hope I can spawn these rares in. So out of that entire cube, it has this little bitty area left that it's worked on. And we are pushing almost 9 million. We're about to, or 9 billion EMC just from this one cube. Yep. Okay. So we, so this thing was about, um, let's see what would be nine, uh, 9.1 and then minus 1.5, right? So it was a, like that whole cube was about 7.6 billion EMC. That's a lot in, in my book. And that, I think these are all different size cubes. So uh, yeah, if you wanna go about quarrying, this is one way to do it, um, for sure. Like this is one way to generate a ton of EMC and you'll never have to really worry about EMC again, I don't think. I, I honestly don't think so. By the way, one little awesome tip that you guys uh, let me know down in the comments is that I could put this advanced dislocator in my hero slot to keep it out of my inventory. I know I can keep this in my Kuro slot. I don't know if this has a, uh, a toggleable key, um, which it probably does, which is awesome. Uh, but I have mine set to numpad zero. So at any time I can just hit this and pull up this and be able to just teleport back home. Like I can go straight back home at any moment or go anywhere, um, honestly, and, and just get back to work. Oh yeah, the item dislocator also has a toggleable key. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna do that too. You know, earlier I was wondering what that admin was coming from. I guess it's this right here, common admin under the lost knowledge. Interesting, I'm surprised that it's a common thing. But yeah, anyways, um, that's that's pretty cool in itself. Like, especially, like, I, I have no idea what that means. It says it gives administrative functionality in a dimension. I, whatever that's supposed to mean, but it is pretty cheap to make from the looks of it. So you may call me a madman, a mad dimensional scientist generator fellow. <laughs> that's the best I could come up with. Um, but <laughs> over here in the uh, inscriber, I have it completely filled. Um, so I have all of these biomes and there are some duplicates in here and I don't know how duplicates actually affect when it's generated, but we're just gonna call this crazy, store it. It actually doesn't require too much, it only requires 5,000 RF. Um, and I think that's based on the rarity of some of the demolits. Luckily we can pull all these out if this world generates like a weird thing. But yeah, let's go ahead and let this world generate. It's, it's gonna take a little bit because of uh, its base cost of uh, creation cost of 6,500 uh, RF per tick. <laughs> With a maintaining cost of 5,000. RF per tick. Wow. Tick costs. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. So this dimension is now realized. Oh boy. This is going to be interesting. Let's, I mean, everybody could use a little bit of crazy. So let's go ahead and dial to said crazy. And let's hope this dimension isn't just like more than crazy. I mean, it's probably crazy. It's, uh, wow. Okay. Tendril, I mean, there are biomes. I guess we didn't define that it's a normal world. <laughs> oh, these tendrils are just ridiculous. This is what this is all about. This right here is the fun that this is all about. I mean, we're generating Enderium blocks. I mean, there's all kinds of craziness here. Silky jewel blocks. These are, <laughs> this is Tinker's Construct silky jewels. It does this. This doesn't even, how do you even make a jewel block? That's not even something you can actually make, I don't think. Apparently beetroot just shows up like this. There's hops. Okay, this is interesting. Chocolate cake is generated. 
Okay. Okay. And ancient debris. Let's not forget about those. And then we also have these, which if, if is, if I remember correctly, I, the only fluid I put in here was water. So this should have water somewhere. I guess water did not generate as a part of this. Probably because it's a hollow sphere. Um, if it was like a solid, maybe it would have water. I don't know. I don't see any of the water, even though it, it was there. What are these? Are these part of those? Oh, those are those crystals. There is all kinds of stuff going on here. This is just wacky. Now, the good thing is, is I can regenerate this world. And uh, we can actually load it into a different world. And it might actually have, like, if we put a number in here, it might actually generate a little bit differently. Which is kind of cool. So we still have villagers spawning. As you can see, there's no, no ground. Completely void here. Um, which is just hilarious. If we go up top here, I'm wondering what kind of dimlets. If it even changes. I don't, I don't know if it changes. There's nothing in that chest. That was a bad example. But I think I'm going to grab this. I'm going to reload. I'm going to reload this area. And I'm going to see... Um, what exactly we could potentially change. Maybe we can actually get some sort of terrain generation going on here. So let's have a go at this again. I'm gonna call this crazy 2.0 um, that will allow me to store that. Perfect, I didn't know if it allows characters like that. So I'm gonna store this. The only thing I changed was the attribute dimlet and a terrain dimlet here. Give me default and waves. And then uh, down here, I just added a couple more features and uh, kind of split these up and kind of removed some of the duplicates. There are a bunch of duplicates though, still even in here, but I wanted to see what it was like to fill it up. Store, we have a new version of this and this one is about the same cost and I just got to give it time to fill up. So onward to crazy two as we dial. I'm just having fun at this point. Honestly, there's nothing. I mean, I'm just, I'm just having a whole lot of fun here. Look at this. We actually got the, ba the, the biomes generating. Um, in waves and whatever this is, that's not, is that a wave? Oh, it's a wave. Isn't like a wave. Oh, I get it. If we go up, we'll be able to see the type of wave. Ah, yes. That kind of wave. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be terrain that is going up and down and up and down in this sort of wave pattern. But yeah, we have tendrils still, but look what's in these tendrils. Um, so I did see someone in the Discord actually posted an image where they made a dimension entirely out of uh, the power blocks. So like every, it just, it was insane just seeing that. But yeah, no, this is, this is cool. This is actually pretty darn cool. Look at this dimension. Wow. Right here. Block of netherite. <sighs> that, that's, that's a, that's one to find. That's interesting. By the way, also uh, in this dimension, tons of bedrock. And that's a, that's a thing. So let's do the one thing that I did want to test here. And uh, that is to see, will this actually spawn inside here? Um, that is the question. So let's take this. Oh, actually, do I have this turned off? Redstone ignored. You know, I could have just turned it off, but I think I have the GPS linked to something else. Go ahead and link that. And all we gotta do is give this some essence. And will it spawn it? Oh, it does. So it does spawn that. Interesting. So it will spawn the rare, but I have yet to see a legendary. Like that's, I have no idea where to, where I would find one of those. So I did add a mod in here called the camera mod. Um, and this mod is actually pretty awesome. Not only can you add images into your game from your computer, um, or I think a link, I think you can also like link a URL. Um, you can place them in your world, uh, but you can also take pictures of, uh, of things in your world. Uh, for example, all you need is paper and we keep paper in inventory and by default, you can just, you know, snap a picture and then hang it on the wall. So right here and bam, there's a picture of the room that we just, uh, we were just in. And uh, if you want to take it off, you can take it off. You can also put this in a photo album, uh, share it with your friends if you're on a server, all that fun stuff. You can make it much larger. 
and place it on there and you can see all the fine details of the room that we're in. Kind of nice, right? Um, so I do want to get a picture in here. Um, let's see of the area that we, uh, we're just in. Let me get close enough to this. I think I shift click. There we go. So perfect. This is a nice, nice space. As you can see, it's going to fit just like that. But I do need to get a picture of this dimension. I think this is all like worth it. Like all of this time put into this just to get a picture of this craziness right here. Oh my goodness. And picture. So we'll take this back. And this is definitely going on the wall. Um, but I, I did want to show you, you can also, not only can you do crazy stuff like this, um, you can actually upload images of your own artwork. So let's just see. Um, there's this uh, really cute artwork that my wife did, for example, of, uh, of my kids and I. So I can actually take this and uh, place it on the wall. Let's see. Camera and frame. So yeah, like if I wanted to, let's say, have a nice little artwork of uh, of my wife or the, the artwork that my wife drew of my kids and I, I can just toss it on there and there we go. <laughs> there's all my daughters and there's me. <laughs> very, very nice. I love this mod. So with all of that, I hope you guys enjoy today's episode as we delve a little bit more into the RF tools. I think this is about it for the RF tools dimensions. As far as EMC goes, I think I have enough to literally last me forever. I don't think I will ever need any more EMC after today, after just harvesting one of those cubes. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. Um, and of course, next episode, be prepared as we get into more power than you could ever imagine. We are going to be draining juices from withers and everything else. So of course, be sure to click that subscribe button so you can follow next episode. But of course today, I do want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And that of course is going to go to... Two Worlder. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member. And of course, guys, if you're interested in, in joining the Discord, all you gotta do is go to discord.gg forward slash chosen architect and join the community of over 23,000 members at the moment. And of course, guys, we're only growing every single day. So be sure to check that out. Also, while you're there, be sure to check out my Twitter. Um, you can go you can just find me at Chosen Architect over on Twitter. Um, and of course, guys, I would love for you to follow me over there. Uh, be sure to check out on Twitch. I do live stream on Twitch normally two days a week. And uh, of course, you can follow me on that as well. After all of this is done, of course, I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, of course, I'll see you in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.